I'm really excited about today, or this week's chapel, actually, because uh, in both today and on Wednesday, we're going to hear from Oscar Merlo. Oscar Merlo is uh, a passionate about empowering new generations with the fire of the Holy Spirit and impacting the world for Christ. In the last 20 years, he has served in the executive leadership positions for, for profit and nonprofit multinational institutions like Target Corporation, ConAgra Foods, and um, the Alberto Montesi uh, Evangelistic Association. Today, he is the founding director for the Center of this, for the Study of the Work and Ministry of the Holy Spirit. And, at, and this is at Biola University. And he's helping bridge the gap between the intellect and academics with guidance and empowerment of the Holy Spirit in vocation and student life. And so he's from Biola University, and he's all the way to, uh, to Kansas to speak to you today and this week. So would you please help me welcome Oscar Merlo. Good morning, Blue Jays. Let me go over here. Good morning, Blue Jays. Yeah, it's still 5.30 a.m. for me. I just arrived just a couple of hours ago, and I'm so thrilled and excited to be with you guys. And especially because you are here to listen to the Word of God. Isn't that exciting? Yeah! I know the semester is settling, and your classes are just demanding, and you are somehow even forced to be here to get a chapel credit. Yeah, yeah. And the chicken crossed the road. So, yes, my name is Oscar Merlot. And I want to start with something very, very spiritual. Would that be okay? It's a joke. I mean, I, you, you got to laugh, though. All right? God promised me you got to laugh. Okay, so I heard about this grandma, graduate from Tabor, right? Tabor College. And she was dating this 92-year-old man, a graduate from Biola. So they went out to a date, this place called Dennis, or Dennis, you know, <laughs> like we would say in Spanish, right? <laughs> and anyway, so she goes to the date, and she's there, and suddenly she comes home, she comes back home, and she's so mad, she's really like frustrated, so her daughter asks her, mom, what happened? She's like, I had to slap that Californian three times, pa, pa, pa. She's like, what? Did he try to um, play footsie with you or something? She's like, no, he was falling asleep. So I tried to wake him up on a couple of occasions, right? So I heard this grandma is outside. <laughs> In case somebody falls asleep this morning, you know, I, I just going to text her and she'll be in here. So this is the part you got to laugh like, ah. <laughs> bueno, buenos días. Mi nombre es Oscar Merlo. Nací en Honduras y soy parte judío. I'm from Honduras. Born in Honduras, but I'm half Jew. So I'm a mixture of all these cultures, and I am so stoked, strike, happy, thrilled to share the Word of God with you today. Um, I want to share a little bit about my background with you guys before I get going. So I guess we turn this here, right? And we go here. This is a big old long name <laughs> for a center. We just call it a center for the Holy Spirit, right? It's under uh, the School of Theology, Talbot, at Biola University. And I lead this, this center there at Biola. Here's where Honduras is. Anyone ever, you know, done a mission trip anywhere in Central America or close to Honduras? Hello? Yeah. Oh, great. Excellent. What part? Mexico, all right, great. Well, there's a lot of um, great things that, that um, Honduras is, is known for. One of them is baleadas. Say with me, baleadas. This is basically a bean burrito, right? <laughs> but we call them baleada. Oh, yeah, bean burrito fans in the house, right? All right, great. Um, I was, um, this was the town where I was born. It's called uh, Puerto Cortes. It is uh, a port city. And we used to play on this bridge. And I would jump off the bridge when the train was coming. I don't recommend you guys doing that when you go on the mission trip, right? But this is, this is basically on the other side. There was a small Baptist church that, you know, we, we, um, we belong to. Isn't she cute? 
The one in the middle, you be like, the ones on the side, guys, I got a 357, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I'm telling you. All right, cool. So I'm just like, want to clear that up with you guys. But this is Lexa, my wife. She sends you guys hugs. So, and uh, Priscilla is 20 and Danae is 17. This one would choke you to death. She's a wrestler. So, yeah, right? Any girls that are wrestlers? All right, great. And Priscilla, <laughs> Priscilla is 20, um, and she's at Pepperdine University. And uh, anyway, she's just uh, enjoying the time of her life in Malibu, right? I guess with all the blue, like, like, yeah, anyways. <laughs> I have fun when I go to Pepperdine. Um, will you stand for the word of God? Um, and here's what the word of God says. Entrad por la puerta estrecha, porque ancha es la puerta y espaciosa es el camino que lleva a la perdición, y muchos entran por ella. You may be seated. This is the word of the Lord. The topic that I want to share with you, but before I get there, I want to thank Ryan. Everybody loves Ryan? Yeah. For inviting me here to Biola today to speak to you, to taking the risk of inviting a Latino practical theologian to come and share with you guys. Um, I travel to about, I don't know, over 50 countries, and I am so thrilled to see what and how the Holy Spirit works among communities such as La Habana, Cuba, or Tel Aviv, Israel, or Amman, Jordan, and now here among you guys in Tabor University. So I am thrilled to discover in new ways how the Spirit of God is working. I'm also uh, thankful that you guys share a birthday with us. In 1908, you guys were founded, and so was Biola University. So we're sisters, <laughs> institutions, right? But we also share on the telos, the integration of faith and learning with our academic disciplines. And this is fantastic because both institutions, I believe, quote, strive to prepare people for life of learning, work and service for Christ and his kingdom. This mission is accomplished by giving students a decisively Christian education, as your president, Jules Ganser, says. So we share a lot of things. We are sisters in that way. On the topic of today, I am sharing on the topic, as we journey, walk this way. Which way? The way of Jesus. You guys familiar with Aerosmith? Oh yeah, how about Rum DMC? Any Rum DMC fans? Here you go, right? Walk this way. -da 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 -da. Walk this way. -da -da -da. Now, in 1986, hey, I'm not that old, right? I graduated in 92. Okay, so I'm not. So this is like my high school years, right? So in 1986, Rum DMC and Aerosmith released the single Walk This Way. The creative composition was a mixture of 50% rap and 50% rock. An electric guitar and a turntable mixed together, merging into something unique, a new gender that was birthed. Walk this way. Open doors for people to listen to rock and rap, music that otherwise would have never had combined or integrated or merged. Black culture and white culture danced the night away to the new rhythm of this song. The venture has been considered as one of the most iconic collaborations in the history of modern music that not only broke down the walls of cultural division, but revolutionized pop music. Now, let me be clear. This is not an innocent song, all right? And I'll just leave it at that, right? It is not a good example of how to walk because it asks you to imitate a particular kind of walk. And we all have a particular bounce to our walk, right? 
We are known for our walk. You're like, man, here comes Jordan, <laughs> right? Because Jordan be like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> right? Or here comes, here comes Oscar. Yeah, what's up? Hey, how you doing, man? Yeah, yeah. Or if you're a girl, I don't know, Priscilla. <laughs> you be like, as soon as they cross, like, they're like crossing like this, like, right? We are known <laughs> for a particular kind of walk. People look at us and they recognize how we walk. People look at us and, 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 and are able to determine how we're walking. So we are imitating somebody's life or other people are imitating our walk. And we are creating a path. You see, life is full of many journeys and many roads. And we are going to have to walk in that journey and in those roads. And that's why we are here. At the university to learn from our professors and from our faculty and our staff, which we think that they're here with us today as well, that would teach us how to integrate our disciplines with our walk. So as we turn to the Bible and we read this verse, which is a verse that is sandwiched in the Beatitudes. Now, I've been to Israel probably about 20 times. In the last, I don't know, seven, eight years, I go twice. And the place of Galilee is one of my favorite places in the world. I actually want to retire in Galilee when I get to be as old as Ryan, right? <laughs> um, Galilee is a fantastic place. When, when you go there and, and you open up the scriptures and you begin to read... The Bible becomes really 3D because you are sitting and reading the stories of Jesus. And more than 70% of the stories of Jesus, in other words, the words that you find in red in some of these Bibles, they kind of happen in Galilee. About 70% of the life of Jesus was there in Galilee. Now, in the Beatitude places, when you are there, you know, it's not like precisely the place, but you read these stories of the Beatitudes, which is Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, right? Which is interesting that you guys are doing the Beatitudes, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, which I consider to be the quality control of Christian life. If we really say that we are Christians and followers of Christ and his teachings, we ought to be demonstrating in our journey and in our walk the Beatitudes. There, this story appears, and Jesus is sharing it. It is sandwiched in there between the false prophet story, the wise and the foolish builder. There we find this verse. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate, the narrow, the road that leads to life. And only few Find it. Now Jesus is teaching to over 5,000 people plus children. Among them were the hurting, the sick, the people from the region of Galilee were people that were suffering from all kinds of traumas. They were displaced. Some were demon possessed. They were forced immigrants from countries like Egypt, Syria, and Lebanon as is known today. These families settled in this region and the majority of them worshiped pagan gods. There were also outcasts. And they were outcast by specifically those that were in power in Jerusalem. They were considered rebels. These people were considered second-class citizens and second-class Jews. They were strangers in the land. This is where Galilee is at. Now, people in this region worked re very, very hard. They were farmers, fishermen, traders, and merchandisers. Galilee had many important roads, as you could see. Can I point with you? Oh, yeah. Cool, yeah. Galilee had many important roads. These roads had to go through several different open gates, right? And big, narrow roads that led to the Mediterranean and into the other world. This other world connected onto oceans through Western Europe, Northern Africa, and as far as the Roman Empire extended, 
all these roads were protected by the Roman authorities and were also well kept. They were built as wide roads that could accommodate multiple travelers and their caravans at the same time. However, there were also very dangerous roads because organized crime or the bandits will intersect the travelers because of their position from Jerusalem, Galilee had became a center of trade as well. There seemed to be a rise of social and also a rise of banditry, economic, social economic and, and banditry as well. Now there was this guy there. He was like the head mafia guy. His name was Judah, Judas of Galilee. And if you read Josephus and any of the historians, he will tell you about his, his record. <laughs> now, this guy had a record. Julius of, Ga of Galilean, Ju or Julian the Galilean, eventually um, was captured and executed by Herod's son. But he was the guy that was responsible for the banditry and for organizing the attacks on the travelers. Now, everyone that was going to Jerusalem knew of the risk that were to be taken. So when Jesus is speaking, people understood what Jesus was talking about, the roads and the gates. The roads in those days were like the freeways of today or the highways that we have. And people prefer to travel on this because they were faster and they will get you to your destination a little bit more faster. Also, everyone knew of the duration and of the time. But regardless of this reality, people made decisions that were convenient, that were easier, that would not put them on these rails that went through the mountains because it would require double traveling. It was, it was a hard road to follow. So the majority of the people chose the way of the wide road. The majority of the people that Jesus was speaking to chose the way of the wide road. If we were to be asked which way we get to Wichita that would be the fastest, logically we would say uh, we would take the highway 153, Salina, and go all the way to Wichita. But I'm sure that there are roads that would take you around that would take longer to get there. So if you were to be asked, and you were part of the audience that Jesus is speaking to, which road would you choose? Which road would you choose? Jesus knew he was talking to an audience that walked. Jesus knew that he was talking to an audience that was moving. Jesus knew that he was talking to an audience that traveled. Everyone had to make a choice between the wide road that led to Jerusalem to go celebrate the year celebrations, to see family, to conduct business, but everyone was faced with a decision. Jesus knew that the travelers would be carrying good. They will be carrying money. They will be carrying their food. So Jesus used the metaphor of the gates and the roads, the experience that people can relate to as they were taking a decision about which road to follow. So Jesus today is also asking us this question about choosing a road, the popular road or an alternative road. In other words, the Holy Spirit wants to reroute, reroute you to another way, the way of Jesus. Not sure, I, I, I don't know. You, you don't know much about me, but I, don't, I know maybe less about you. But some of you guys may be facing some decisions that are really important about career. The incoming class may be chasing or choosing decisions that would create a road or a pathway for your future. But we are all facing decisions in the road that we are in today, in the journey that we are in today. When this teaching was happening... Jesus had just arrived from Nazareth, which is about 40 miles away 
from the main road in Capernaum. And Jesus chose not to go through the popular and dangerous wide road. He went through the other side. He went through the road that led from the mountains into Jerusalem. He chose that road. And he utilizes this metaphor to bring about this teaching. We must choose the way of Jesus. Or we must choose the way of the wide road. Jesus chooses to go through a narrow trail that goes in and out of the mountains and ends at the valley that gives entrance into Capernaum. When you are in Galilee and you take the tour to the Beatitudes, ensure that they take you to the place where the way of Jesus starts. It is not a famous place. It is not put into the tours that we do. It is not something that is, that is celebrated. Because tour guides don't want you to see the way of Jesus. I was there in 2010 when it was inaugurated again. We had about 30 to 40 different news and, 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 and big, um, what do you call it, uh, newscasters and, and media. And you know, many people, <laughs> even though we had so many... Don't know still today about the way of Jesus. Now this is the back road and it will take you three days to get there. <laughs> right now, today. Three days when, when we do the other way through bike. It will probably take you, I don't know, eight hours. In cars probably takes you about four hours to get there. But the way of Jesus... The trail of Jesus, Jesus' trail takes you into the mountain. And Jesus is with you through those mountains. Through the situations and the curves and the unexpected turns of life. When we decide to follow Jesus, that will be part of our journey. It's not just a straight path. But Jesus is with us. Jesus' trail always ends at the valley as well. Life will be difficult. However, when we look at the valleys of our life, there's also rest in them. Also, there are opportunities for us to deepen our lives in relationship with the Holy Spirit. Also, there are places where heart is fulfilled. We read the verse, Como el siervo brama por las corrientes de las aguas. Así brama el alma mía por ti. As the deer thirsts for the waters, so does my soul thirsts for you. There's something that happens at the valleys with the soul. When we're in this journey of walking that it desires our life, that no matter what it is, this white road has offered when we draw from Jesus. Our lives are fulfilled. But when we draw from the other things, Will be temporary enjoyment. Jesus trail is also walked by having the light of the word unto our feet. Lampara es a mis pies tu palabra y lumbrera a mi camino. It is a lamp unto our feet. The, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet as, as we walk through life. It is something so amazing when you I was going to bring and I left it at home. One of the old lamps that were used, they're probably about this big. And they are used and, and then when you walk through, even specifically at night, you have to be very careful because in those roads, you go boom, fall off the road. So the lamp will have to be lighted so that you will walk through the mountains as you went through the roads. The majority of people... Knew that they didn't want to travel at night because it was too dark. I mean, they, they, they had no light <laughs> like, like we have street lights. I came across a couple of those as I was driving. I was like, oh, my God, where am I going? Am I good? Is the GPS working fine here, you know? I'm like, babe, babe, please stay with me, stay with me. <laughs> I'm like a scary cat, believe me. Like, like. Anyways, side note. But <laughs> coming back. So, what was it? Oh, yeah. The lamp. So, the lamp is utilized. Is your relationship in following Jesus where the word of God 
which is the word that is on us, on top of us, through us, in us, all around us. It's the word of God guiding your journey. The word of God helping you to make decisions. This road is known today as following Jesus. <laughs> and I want to propose it to you um, as, 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 as a road that is not popular. I mean, a lot of things are, a lot of things are popular, but, but this is part of the, the other road. So here's the one. If you want to do the three-day hike right now to go when you go to Israel, I mean, it, it would take you that long to get all the way, all the way there, right? Um, so, this is not a popular road, guys. Um, it requires of us decisions. Um, it was unpopular then, and it continues to be unpopular today. I mean, the term to follow, to be a follower of Jesus Christ, in some of the, in some of the social context of our country and in the world has been associated to not being wanted to be part of that. I was recently in Venezuela and this kid approached me. I mean, if you know about Venezuela, it's a very complex moment in, 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 in the history of that country. After being the capital of development 20, 25 years ago, now is suffering for about 5 million percent depreciation. When I started going to Venezuela, $1 equals 7 bolivares. Today, 5 million bolivares. Did you hear that? 5 million bolivares equals $1. I mean, this is just ridiculous. And the student told me, Oscar, we are living in a time now in Venezuela where we need to be brutalmente evangelicos. What does that mean? It means we need to be courageous evangelicals. Society today, you and I today, as we follow Jesus, is not going to be popular. But as we walk into the spaces of our professions and of our lives, we need to be courageous to stand for Jesus. To be there for Jesus. As he stood for us at the cross, we will stand for him. Amen? Should be clapping by now. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to help you kind of integrate some of that. Do not be ashamed of your faith. Do not be ashamed of the word of God. Do not be ashamed of Christ. Now, the narrow road is also unpopular, as I said. The, the wide road is very easy. It's a way it out. You know what? You know, I'm just going to kind of go that route. But you know what, guys? Aren't we thankful for grandmas and for moms? Because they will pray us into back <laughs> into our walk of Christ, right? And some of you might not be like walking in that. But you know what? The grandmas and moms and our churches and our friends' community prayer will help us to find back our ways into Christ. Now, let me kind of wrap this up with two questions. Now, what does it mean to walk through the narrow gate for this generation? What are the rules of the way of Jesus? First, I want you to be, be clear with, I, I want to leave this, 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 this point very clear with you. That is difficult. Say with me, it's difficult. The word <clears throat> difficult in Greek is phlebo. Which means to be pressed as grapes, to be pressed upon, to be compressed, to be narrow strained, to be contracted. But whoever goes through this will find life. Will find life. And that's kind of what the verse is kind of saying within that. That in our journey as we seek Jesus, we will find life. Seek life. And we seek that by following Jesus in his way. The second thing is that this is an invitation for you to consider. You know, do it. I mean, you're an adult. But an invitation is considered. So in that consideration, 
following Jesus requires that we live, requires that we live a life of integrity, that we live a life for Christ, that we live a life for him, that we follow Jesus with radical decisions. Say radical decisions. Radical decisions. So are you up to this challenge? This radical decisions lead us to life. The Bible says, whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Jesus says to the doubting Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So what does it mean to walk in the steps of the master Jesus? It means we must decide to follow him. And there are four considerations of this invitation that I want to leave you with. Actually, there are five or six. That in this walk of Jesus, we must practice the rules of the way of Jesus. Time. As we journey with Jesus, we attend to time. As we journey with Jesus, we attend to money. We know that Jesus wants to toggle our hearts. As we attend to Jesus, we give him our imagination. As we walk with Jesus, we include him in our decision making. As we walk with Jesus, we give him the authority. And whatever power we may have, we give it to him. And as we attend to Jesus, we live in community. As we walk with him. So will you pray with me? Father, Holy Spirit, we want to walk with you. Many of us here are facing decisions that require you that require of us to open up our hearts. I pray for every student that is here, Father. Holy Spirit that are making decisions follow you allow them to know that they are not by themselves God and that everything is going to be okay in the journey of life and yeah it's going to be okay God the Lord has you whatever journey whatever it looks like Tomorrow, it's going to be okay. Will you extend your hand to the person next to you and just put your hand on them? It's okay. And just pray for their journey. Right? And as we are about to just pray for them, say, Father, thank you for their journey. You know path they're on, what decisions they're making, and their journey with you, Father. Let our hands be your hands, for you are with us. And in this posture, we are dismissed. But if you 